Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jacob. You're pretty awesome too. <laughs> oh, praise God. Let me get myself organised. How good is it to be in church, hey? Always good to be in God's house. Amen. Um, now, on Tuesday night, just for all our team, everybody that serves on team or if you're thinking about serving on team, Tuesday night is for you. We're bringing in Vicky Simpson uh, to our Junalup venue, which is actually uh, Cynthia's house, our Junalup venue. <laughs> Cynthia's house, Junalup venue. Um, so make sure you're there. So we've got dinner, um, but we just thought it'd be great to bring Vicky Simpson, Simpson in just before we transition to our new location. So she's got something for us. She's been praying. She's ready. Uh, so please... Please um, set some time aside um, and please make sure you're there. See your, your uh, team leaders, your department leaders. Let them know uh, you're coming. I think one person's RSVP'd. Uh, one's yes and one's no. I need the rest of you to tell me if you're coming or not um, because we need to provide meals, etc. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Praise Jesus. So we're currently preaching through our values as a church at the moment, which we thought would be really good to do both corporately and individually. Corporately, because we're about to transition to our new location. Um, and I really think this will strengthen us and unite us as we make that move. We need everybody on board, guys. Everybody on board. No one is going to be left behind. Amen. And individually, you know, these values that we have as a church, they're not just, we just haven't pulled them out of, they're biblical. They are biblical. You'll see them from the Old Testament right through to the New Testament. Jesus himself and his followers embrace these values. Biblical characters from the Old Testament, the ones that succeeded, yes, they stuffed up and made mistakes, but they succeeded in God. They embraced these values. They walked out these values. They lived these values. And so as we embrace them, as we live them out, as we walk them out, we will live our best life in Jesus. Amen. The life that he died to give us, the abundant life. As we embrace them, you know, God continues to lift us higher. He doesn't, he doesn't just keep us. He doesn't just let us stay where we're at. And for some of us, it's like sometimes me, I get comfortable. I'm like, oh, come on, Jesus, just for a little bit longer. <laughs> but he continues to call us higher. He continues to, to want us to grow, you know. He continues to say, come over here. I've got this for you. Step this way. Step into it. Uh, the abundant life. So now our values here at Everyday Church are these. Courageous faith, excellence, unity, generosity, connect with God, which is salvation, empowering others, and personal growth. And so just to recap over the past two weeks, Pastor Jacob uh, preached an incredible message on courageous faith on Father's Day. And so uh, this is what we believe here at Everyday Church. Courageous faith is we live a life of faith. We are bold, big thinking, courageous believers. If God calls us to it, we will do it. Amen. Amen. Mark 9, 23, everything is possible for one who believes. Everything is possible for one who believes. And, and Pastor Jacob spoke about getting to know God and getting to know God's word. You have to get to know God and you have to get to know his word. And as we do this, the reason being is so that we can trust God and we can trust his word. You've got to get to know someone to trust them. You have to know his word, what he's saying to you to step out. A bold faith, a faith that pleases him. When we trust God, when we trust his word, we can step out with a courageous faith. And so Pastor Jacob confusingly preached about Jacob in the Bible. So now I'm talking about Jacob in the Bible. He trusted in his God. And when he was challenged by circumstances, he was able to say this, I am afraid, but because you have said, I am afraid, but because you have said, he trusted in God and he trusted in the promises of God. And so believing God's word, believing God's promises, and despite our circumstances, we are still a people that can step out with a courageous faith. Amen. Let's continue to do that. Where is God challenging you personally to step out with a courageous faith, a faith that pleases him? And then last week, Pastor Buckia spoke on excellence. And excellence is not perfection. Excellence is not perfection, but doing the best, doing the best we can in, in God. Why? To glorify him. 
It's about him. It's not even about us. It's to glorify him. And Pastor Bucky highlighted uh, Daniel in the Bible who stood out from everyone else because he had a spirit of excellence. Everything he did, he did well. We're talking about Daniel in the Bible. And because of this, he was promoted. God could trust him. God could trust him with more because Daniel cared about the little things. The little things matter. Why? Because God gets the glory. And you know, Jesus was the same. The same uh, place in the Bible where it says this, in Mark 7, 37, it says this, speaking about Jesus, people were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. So this scripture is speaking about Jesus. Jesus stood out because he did everything well and God got the glory. And so our heart with excellence is this. I think it's already been on the screen. Here it is. Everything we do, we do to the best of our God-given abilities to glorify God. Nothing is too big or too small. We are people of integrity. And so Luke chapter 16 verse 10 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with with much. And again, it's not about us. It's about him and it's about giving him all the glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what I thought would be good to do today, and Pastor Bucky, she finished with, um, you know, it's different for everyone. You know, for some, it's as simple as punctuality. For some, it's as simple as doing what you said you are going to do. For some, it's just being who you say that you are. For some, it's um, stepping out or walking in kindness. You know, the little things in marriage, compassion, whatever it may be. For some, it's being disciplined to rest. For some, it's being disciplined to serve. You know, it's different for everyone, but it's like what Pastor Bucky finished on was this. Do what God said. Do what God said. Now, is that four words? What was the other one? Can I pray for you? So that's the fivefold finger the five finger ministry can i pray for you me and jake are a little bit simple you'll get used to us praise jesus and then you had four words yeah and they were do what god said and it's as simple as that and again it's different for everyone but what do we do we do everything in excellence we do things well because it glorifies god amen all right so if you missed Uh, both those messages or one of those messages, I really encourage you to jump online, uh, have a listen on our website, YouTube channel, etc. But what I thought this morning is the value that I thought we could focus on uh, is personal growth. And this is because to, to have a spirit of excellence basically is to be open to growth. Uh, It's to be teachable. It's to to work on the areas that need working on in our lives. You know, I just mentioned a few there. Punctuality, kindness, compassion, discipline to rest. You know, I have to be disciplined. I have to discipline myself to rest. I I do. And, and, And it's important. And so it's allowing God to change us from the inside out. And again, God continues to call us to a higher standard uh, as we grow in him, both corporately as a church and individually as well. So personal growth for our church at Everyday Church is we take responsibility for our own growth spiritually, emotionally, and physically. We are committed to growing in our relationship with Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 8 says, being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, which is the spirit. The New Living Translation says this in 2 Corinthians 3.18. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. And so personal growth is basically becoming more and more like Christ, becoming more and more like Jesus. Personal growth is taking responsibility for our part. We heard uh, Cynthia just share so beautifully about taking responsibility. Pray your own prayers, church. (laughs) She's like the mama bear. I love it. I love it. Uh, taking responsibility for our part, whether it's spiritually, whether it's emotionally, or whether it's physically. Personal growth is allowing God to change us, to shape us, to mould us, to teach us, to heal us, to lead us. We have to allow God. He's, He's a gentleman. 
He's not going to force his way. We have to allow him, give him permission, allow him to do that. Personal growth is not playing the, playing the blame game. You know, that's just our natural self at times. You know, we can be quick to blame, to deflect, to, uh, to say it's not me, it's you. I think Jacob's heard that a thousand times. <laughs> it's not me, it's you. The blame game. Taking responsibility are key words with this value, so important. So there's different parts to us, different areas. We have mind, uh, we have spirit, body and soul. Spirit, body and soul. We are a spirit, which is perfect in Christ. We have a soul and we live in a body. So our body, if you like, is our earth suit. Our body is our earth suit and one we are called to look after while we're on this earth. So personal growth physically is this, understanding that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20 says this, Don't you realise that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? These are such powerful words. You have to think about this as I'm reading it. You do not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a high price, so you must honour God with your body. Romans 12.1 Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You know our bodies belong to God? We are the living temple of the Holy Spirit. You have to think about that for a moment. We cannot ignore that truth. We are the living temple of the Holy Spirit. If you're a born again believer, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. In the Old Testament, we heard uh, in our tithing message that um, it was a physical building. You know, Solomon built uh, David's son, it was a physical building that, you know, they spent a lot of time. There were specific instructions. They spent money. To enter into the temple, you had to be clean and purified. It was a holy place set apart for prayer. It was set apart for uh, worship. It was set apart for God's presence. And now we are that living temple, our bodies. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Ephesians 4.30 says this, and do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteed, guaranteeing that you'll be saved on the day of redemption. So this means that it's absolutely integral that we look after the bodies that God has given us, including our minds, including our minds that we don't grieve the Holy Spirit that's living inside of us. That we truly, when we truly have this revelation that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden things become top priority. Things like rest, exercise, healthy food, watching what we watch on TV. If anyone even watches TV anymore, we don't even have our TV connected. Netflix, movies, whatever it is, watching what you watch because your mind, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and we're not to grieve the Holy Spirit. So all of a sudden it becomes top priority. It's important that I discipline myself to rest. It's important that we eat healthy food. Our bodies, we're called to look after them because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Habits, addictions, food, drugs, alcohol, smoking, porn, sexual immorality, all these things need to be laid aside. These are the things that we need to lay down as we pursue personal growth in this area. 1 Corinthians chapter, it's all, all of a sudden gone very quiet in here. What are they 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We've got to preach the truth of God, amen? The Bible, scripture. It's important. Family talks about family stuff, right? Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 to 15, it says this. And this is where you go, oh, that's law, grace, da-da-da, blah, blah, blah. Let's read this. You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. So you're free, 
but not everything's good for you. Even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not be a slave to anything. If something has a hold over you, whatever it may be, then it's a problem. You say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. That is true, though someday God will do away with both of them. <laughs> Scripture preaches for you, amen. But you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord and the Lord cares about our bodies and God will raise us from the dead by his power just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Jump down to verse 18. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. What was that price? Jesus Christ. God bought you with a high price. That high price was sacrificing his one and only son on a viciously on a cross. So you must honor God with your body. You had, you had to let him say that anymore these days. You must. You can, you should, maybe, perhaps. You must. You must honor God with your body. So our bodies are, again, the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not something to be taken lightly. And we all have stuff we need to lay down, all of us, including myself, because God continues to, to, to call us higher. What was okay a few years ago isn't okay today. And what's okay today is not going to be okay in a few years' time because not all of it's sin, you know, eating junk food or, or not ex or whatever it may be. It's not all sin, but he continues to call us higher. Amen? What's important is that we're hearing from God. I already forgot your buck. Do, do what God said. Do what God said. It's important that we're hearing from God, following his leading and being obedient to that. And I want to encourage you, you know, some habits die hard. <laughs> some habits die hard. And so it's important that we get help if you need it. Reach out, ask God, ask others. You know, that's why we have the body of Christ. That's why we have each other, to support each other, to encourage each other, to speak truth. Whatever it may be, you know, pastors, counsellors, mentors, coaches, you know, we, we have so many people that we can go to these days. James 5.16 says this, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. You know, sometimes when we keep things in the dark, it just gets darker. But when we bring it to the light, when we speak it out, all of a sudden half your issue is solved. <laughs> half of it. Henry Cloud, a worldwide respected Christian psychologist, he wrote the book Boundaries. If you've read it, uh, some of us have, uh, says this. The idea of self-help suggests you can solve all your problems alone. But true growth happens when you recognize the need for support beyond yourself. Reach out connect with God, seek wise counsel and find real help from others who can guide you through your challenges. You know, we're here for each other. You know, it's not about judgment. It's not about condemnation. It's helping each other step into all that God has for us, both corporately and individually. You know, there's nothing wrong with uh, personal change, uh, trainers, even though some of us might think that. Yeah, right. Yeah, anyway. Personal trainers, coaches, counsellors, whoever. Proverbs 11.14 says this. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. And the New King's James Version says this. Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counsellors, there is safety. You know, sometimes we have different people speaking into different areas in our lives. You know, a counsellor or, or a mentor or a coach or a pastor or a personal trainer if it's physical or, or whatever it may be. There's nothing wrong with having various people speak into our lives. 
Get help if you need it. There's no shame in it. Amen? We're not meant to do it alone. People are qualified in certain areas. And you know there's been a teaching that circulated uh, around the church um, over the past however many years and it's and it's this truth that says this we don't go by our feelings we don't go by our feelings but we go by God's word alone we only go by God's word and there's truth to that to a degree there's a lot of truth to it if we don't take it too far so yes we don't allow our emotion and feelings to dictate our lives that's important we don't allow them to push us around we don't allow that we, we we can't be double-minded you know and be tossed back and forth we don't allow fear to paralyze us for instance we, we you know we need to push past that fear you know we can't let that stop us from stepping out we don't allow feelings of inferiority or condemnation to to push us to shrink back from the things of god however it doesn't mean that we ignore our emotions or our feelings completely we, we don't set them aside as if they are evil god gave us emotions for a reason he gave us feelings for a reason and it's important that we recognize this you know whether we're happy sad frustrated annoyed angry whatever it may be it shows us where we're at it shows us where we are at and helps us identify our next steps our emotions tell us if there's a problem and it's important that we process this correctly. It's so important. You know, Jesus had emotions. The shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Uh, you know, he knew, and that's in regards to Lazarus. He knew he could raise Lazarus from the dead. He knew that. But he was upset. He was upset that his friends were upset. Lazarus' sisters were upset. They were devastated. Lazarus' friends were upset. Jesus was one of his friends. So he, 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 even though he knew he could raise him from the dead and that he was going to, he still experienced those emotions. You know, the Bible says, and we've already heard it this morning, that we're to mourn with those that mourn and be joyful with those that are joyful. You know, we can recognize our feelings and still have faith. That's okay. We can recognize our feelings and still have faith. If we look at the psalmist in Psalm 13, it says this, How, O oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O oh Lord my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat saying we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. But I trust, but I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. So they, they recognized their feelings, abandonment, rejection, sorrow, sadness, whatever it was, yet still had trust and faith in their God, in who he was and what he said he could do. You know, some of us need to grow in the area of becoming emotionally healthy. We need to be looking at increasing our EQ, not just our IQ, but our EQ. It's important. Personal growth physically, emotionally and spiritually. You know, when we're in tune with our emotions, it's easy to empathize with others as well. Henry Cloud also says this, embracing our imperfections is a sign of emotional strength and maturity. Just like a child learning to walk, we grow by accepting we are all works in progress. Every single one of us, I stand here today, is still a work in progress. We all are until Jesus comes again. And we focus on building competence, not proving self-worth. So it's not about self-worth. It's important that you hear that you're already worthy in God, regardless of what it is, whatever habit or whatever it is that you need to be working on or dealing with or growing in, you're already worthy in God. You're worthy because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. You have his righteousness already. You're already forgiven. You're already loved. You're already chosen. 
you're worthy. So it's not about, it's not a question of worthiness. You already have that, which is pretty awesome. That's the kind of gracious and merciful God we serve. You are worthy. It's not trying to also attain some sort of worthiness as well. If I can just get better at this or if I can just lay, you know, I keep having this same issue if I just stop doing that. Whatever, it, it, it's not about attaining worthiness a certain level. It's about becoming more like Jesus. That's what it's about. Why? To glorify him, to glorify our heavenly father. And you know what? It's not an easy road. It's not an easy road. It's the easy road is to blame, to deflect, to say you're the problem, to become defensive. That's easy. That's super easy. And a lot of us are pretty skilled in doing that. It's harder to say, hey, let me take a look at my own stuff. That person may still have their own issues, but that's their stuff. God, what are you dealing with with me? It's about taking responsibility. It's remaining teachable. It's being open to discipline, correction, accepting imperfections. None of us are perfect. We heard it last week. Not one single person. Only Jesus Christ is. But we're still worthy in him. How cool is that? We're still worthy. It's about being committed to growth. Matthew, Jesus said this, taking the hard road. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14 says this, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only few find it. Personal growth will take time. It'll take sacrifice. It'll take humility. It'll even take money at times. How do we grow spiritually? Moving away from the emotional <laughs> and the physical. Spiritually, we speak a lot about this at church, spiritually. How do we grow spiritually? Being in church, for one, like you all are here today, that's helping you grow spiritually. Reading your Bible, being in prayer, spending time with God, prayer meetings, growth groups, taking foundation classes, being on serving teams, attending conferences. Pastor Jake was on fire this morning. Why? Because <laughs> he went to a conference yesterday. Conferences are good things to attend. They broaden your mind. They minister to you. They speak. They help you. They expand you. Will it cost you? Yeah, it'll cost you a Saturday and it'll cost you $45. Oh, 65 Sorry. <laughs> Pastor Chin went too. It's not a bad thing. It's important that we position ourselves to help us grow spiritually. We don't put all these things on at church just for fun. It's like me and Jacob are so bored at home with our three kids. It's like, what, how can we fill up our weeks? No, it's far from what we're going to do. Let me tell you. It's nice to help us grow spiritually, help you guys grow spiritually. Why do we put prayer meetings on fortnightly, Tuesday? to get our mind off ourselves, you, you, you encounter, first of all, you have an encounter with Jesus Christ yourself. If you've ever been there, you will know. We have our own personal uh, praise and worship person that comes in and lead us in worship, which is incredible for our music team to do that for us. We encounter Jesus. We're growing, God's speaking to us, but then we're praying for people that don't yet know Jesus Christ. That's going to grow you spiritually. Instead of staying at home Netflixing it or... Uh, whatever else we do, that's going to grow us. Being around like-minded people is so important. Yes, we need to hang out with those that don't know Christ, but we also need to be filled up and be around people that do know Christ because they're the ones that are going to encourage us, speak truth to us. Listening to podcasts, pod, pod, podcasts. God's, if God's calling you to Bible college, do that. I'm still doing Bible college. One unit a semester. Studying God's word. If it's not Bible college, it's your own personal study. It's taking time, setting time aside. All of these things will help you to grow spiritually. The team can come, please. Pa Pastor Jay was so on fire this morning. I didn't think I'd ever get the mic off him. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And so the question we need to ask ourselves is this, 
How much time am I dedicating to this? How much time am I dedicating to this? What are my priorities? Have a look at your priorities. Where you spend your time, that will tell you. And this is between you and God. I've got, I sort my stuff out. You got, I can help you. But this is between you and God. Spiritual maturity isn't about how long you've been a Christian per se. It's about really how obedient you are to God. You can meet someone that's been a Christian for 20, 30 years and you'll ask questions. You'll meet someone who's just got saved and they're firing along. It's all about our obedience to God, our next steps, do what God said. What is God saying to you? Are you be obedient to that? Amen. We just bow your heads. I'm just going to pray. Lord, I just thank you for who you are, Father God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. And I just pray, Father, for every person here right now and everyone listening online, Lord, that you'd continue to speak, Lord. But not only that, that we would be listening. Just right now, I really believe God's touching on on areas, on certain things. He's highlighting stuff that he wants you to take personal responsibility for. And not just while you're sitting here, but when you walk out the doors as well, that you actually walk away and do something, that you take action. Lord, I thank you that you've graced each person in this area, Father God. I thank you that you call us all higher, Father. I thank you that you have a plan for each of us, Lord God, a a significant plan, Lord God. I thank you that you call is irrevocable, that you continue to draw us, you continue to lead us, you, you just continue to encourage us. And sometimes it takes sacrifice, laying things down. And I pray that you'd strengthen each person right now, Lord God, to continue to walk in all that you have for them, Father. Have your way, Jesus. We thank you for your presence here right now, Lord God. Just with every head bowed, I just want to, before I finish up here, I want to give anybody here an opportunity that hasn't entered into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, or you haven't begun your journey. I want to give you an opportunity right now, anyone listening online. If you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, Asked him to forgive you, wash you clean, and start a new life in him, then today you can do that. There's a prayer that you can pray from your heart, believing it with all your heart. And we're going to pray it all together right now as a church. So church, if you can follow after me, and if this is you, just pray it and believe it from your heart. God, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for me. I ask that you forgive my sins, wash me clean, and today I choose to make you Lord and Saviour of my life, and I choose to live for you. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Just with every head still bowed, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, if you can just lift your hand up into the air just so I can see it. I see that hand there. Praise Jesus. Just a moment longer if you're watching online. If you can pop in the comments and we'd love to get some resources to you. Heavens are rejoicing right now. One person saved. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know we serve a good God. 
We serve a good God. And yes, that's a statement. We serve a good God, a gracious God, a merciful God, a God that wants so much for you. There's a call upon your life, each and every person. And he wants you to continue to step into all that he has for you. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. All right. How do we transition to some praise? Is that what we're going to do like this? <laughs> Why don't you stand to your feet and praise the God because he is good. Amen.